Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes back here with Stats Medic Stuff. Um, we're working through the last part of 6.2, and we're going to talk about how the mean and the standard deviation varies when you're starting having to add two different values of variables together. Okay, so again, remember, throw me a what? What do they call it? A like, comment, and no, like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Do that. So anyway, um, I decided because again, remember, I'm paying you all this money for this job. Okay, um, I've decided to. Permanent employment wages are going to either be $9, $12, or $15, okay? And at the end of every year, I'm going to give you guys a raise. So, and I'm going to randomly assign that because, you know, why not? Who cares about merit at this point? So anyway, so the mean of this data up here, again, you go through and you can find the expected value of here. So multiply these out, find the difference. There's ways to do it on the calculator. Talk to me if you want to know about that. So $11.85, excuse me, is your mean. Your variance, which is what you calculate up after you find the difference of squares, or the square of the differences, the sum of the squares of the differences, that's how I'm trying to say, is 4.93. And then over here, your standard deviation is going to be $2.22. Okay? Actually, I probably should put little dollar signs on that. Okay, so here is the randomness at the end of every year that everybody's going to get for a raise. The probability, either people are going to get a $1 raise or a $3 raise. There is a 70% chance that you get a $1 raise and a 30% chance you're going to get a $3 raise. So then we ask, so that you go through and you're going to find the mean and standard deviation of that. A little bit easier when you only have two data points. And I'm talking really fast. I'm sorry. We will slow it down just a touch. Anyway. Moving on. So once you find that information, the first question that they ask is, um, after we're going to find N, and N is the new hourly wage. And what we're going to do is so that's going to be X, so your old hourly wage, added to your, your raise. That's the word I'm looking for. So what ends up happening is you can go $9 and a dollar raise and get 10. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. 12 plus 3 is 15, et cetera, et cetera. Then we get $16 and $18. So after the first year, while well, everybody's starting here, everybody is now at one of these three rates. And as you can imagine, what's the probability of, what, of getting a particular wage? So like right here, just as a review, what's the probability of being assigned a $9 wage and getting a dollar raise? Now, these are independent. Okay, there's no overlap between the two. They're two totally different variables. So we can just go ahead. We don't have to worry about taking out an uh, intersection. So the probability of a $9 wage and a $1 raise is going to be the probability of a $9 wage initially and the $1 raise after that. So that means I get 30% times 70%. And 21% of the people are going to end up being making $10 at the end of the first year. So then, after everybody feels comfortable with that, what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to make a table. So you're going to do the exact same thing, and you're going to make this table, and you're going to make a probability distribution for 10, 12, 13, 15, 16, and 18 dollars. So same process as up above. So you're going to take, for example, for the $12 one, I'm going to take 30% times 30%, and I'll get 9%, as you can see. And we do the same thing for the 13 and the $15, so 13, 15, and 16, and 18. And of course, we wouldn't be in stats if we didn't find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of each of those. So now the new average wage is up to $13.45. Notice the variance has jumped up a little bit, and my standard deviation has only increased a little bit. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Hayes, this is kind of cool. We've kind of already played around with some of this. But let's get a little bit closer here to what's going on. Let's check how does this mean relate to what's going on to those two means. Remember what we've done the last couple of days, yesterday in particular. I'm going to get out a colored pen because it's that important. So notice this one right here. Okay, that is 11.85. So the mean of X plus the dollar sixty, which is the mean of Y. Ooh, that's cool. Down over here. So that means we can add this one. 
So we can add, so just add, add, so we can add this. Notice the variance when I compare it to these top two numbers up here is just equal to $4.93, the variance from X plus the variance from Y, 0.839. So we can add there. Now, the standard deviation, remember, the question is, is that equal to these two standard deviations? And very obviously, it's not, because $2.40 is not $0.91 cents more than $2.21. So this is not equal to $2.22 plus $9.17. So that means you can't add this. However, remember, the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So since we can add the variance, we're in good shape, okay? Because we can just take the variance, add, you know, we can take the two variances, add it together, and then take the square root of it to get that one, okay? So just as kind of a reminder, so if n is equal to x plus y, oh, these should be little n's here. I don't know why those didn't come through on math type. My apologies. So the mean of n is going to equal the mean of x plus the mean of y. And the standard or the variance of x, except the standard deviation, variance is squared. So the standard deviation of n is going to equal the square root of the standard deviation of x squared plus the standard deviation of y squared. Okay? So that was the experience part of it. Not anything that you guys have to do, it's just going to be more or less a thought problem. And then after we're done with this, I'm going to go ahead and formalize it on the next video. So please make sure that you check that out when you have a chance. We'll see you soon.